fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi yo silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> In the early days of the Western United States, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for justice. He was the greatest champion of law and order the frontier ever knew, and his strength and courage were always at the service of the weak against the strong. It was the famous masked rider more than any other man who made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! The Indians are on the warpath! We've got to hurry! Hello, Silver! Away! It was late afternoon. A masked man sat astride a great white stallion, while beside him on a paint was an Indian. A man in his sixties, whose dress was that of a rancher, watched the masked man closely, a look of entreaty on his face. The group was concealed from the view of a nearby ranch house by a grove of trees and... You will do this for me, friend? Of course I will, Matt. When I run across Tonto, that was the first thing I thought of, that you'd be the one to ask. I'm glad you did. I came at once. You said nothing about this yet to your wife? Mm Mm-mm. At first, I just couldn't. Now, I'd rather not till you've made sure. But didn't she know your son planned to come home? I was keeping it for a surprise. Oh? You see, Ma's birthday was week before last. I wrote to Ed saying it'd be kind of nice if he could bring the young'un and get here just the day before. It did a tickle her pink. He wrote back he would. I reckon the whole thing's my fault. If I'd kept still, he'd have come on a different stage, and this had never happened. Don't blame yourself. You couldn't know it would be attacked by Indians. Just the same, I... It's one of those things no one could have foreseen. And as you said, it's still not certain that your boy and his child were killed. I don't know. You wouldn't have sent for me if you didn't feel there was some hope, would you? No. Then try to believe all will be well. If it's possible to make sure of their fate, Tonto and I'll do so. Whatever we learn, you'll hear from us at the earliest possible moment. Thank you. Now, where was it the stage was attacked? Why, between Pawnee City and the first stage station this side. Quite a distance from here. Uh Uh-huh. That's why I didn't learn what happened sooner. Who discovered the stage? The agent at the station. He seen smoke and found it burning. And he's the man to call on first. And the sooner we get at it, the better. Don't lose courage, Matt. Tonto and I'll do everything in our power. And I'll be grateful for it as long as I live. Ready, Tonto? Ah, uh-huh. then come. Hello, Get him up, the Hello. Hello. 
Many miles distant, at the other end of the state, was the little village of Cottonwood, not far from Pawnee City. Inside a shabby office on Cottonwood's main street, a man of 35 faced an older man, seated behind a scarred desk. Well, it's all settled then, Mr. Niles. I'll give you $50. As long as I pay you 50 on the first of every month till you've got your 500 the lucky dollar's mine. <laughs> and that's right, Jim. You've bought yourself a gold mine. You think I'm a fool, don't you? Oh, I wouldn't say that. And just the same, I'll bet you're thinking it. Well, no, you... I'm not blaming you. You ain't no different from the others. They all think it. But I've got a feeling about that mine, Mr. Niles. I've got a hunch it ain't worked out. I figure you just lost the vein somehow. I'm going to find it again. There ought to be plenty of gold left in there. <laughs> Well, at least you're not risking much. Not to your way of thinking, maybe. Yes? You're rich. Everybody knows that. Me and Bess, well... Well, that $50 I just gave you is almost every dollar we got in the world. You might be surprised to know how far from being rich I really am right at this moment. But, Jim, do you mean to say you actually haven't any more money? Doggone little. Well, then how do you expect to make the other payments as they fall to you? Out of earnings? Huh? Out of the gold to take from the mine. Oh, oh. <laughs> you just wait and see. You needn't worry. I'll get enough to pay you. And uh, enough to support your family besides? You bet I will. Well, Jim, I'm always glad to meet an optimist. But I'm afraid you'll soon be feeling differently. I'm afraid it won't be long until the lucky dollar's back in my hands again. I... Huh? Isn't that your son just rode up in front? Really? Yeah, well, sure it is. Now, what's he in town for? He's coming in. I can't understand. Ah! Billy, what are you doing in town? Pa, guess what? Huh? Oh, hello, Mr. Niles. Hello, young man. Pa, I guess what I found today and brung home. What did you find? A little baby sister. What's that? I did, Pa. Honest, I did. Ma says she can't be hardly a year old yet. Well, go, go. <laughs> You've got to come home and see her. Gee, Pa, she just laughs all the time, and she's so tiny yeah, that... Yeah, yeah, whoa up here. But she's oh, now, just hold a... on. Let's get this straight. Who's young and is it? We don't know. Huh? Well, that's just it. I found her over by the salt legs. But how did you... Some engine squaw had her. Oh. I seen she was white, and I took her away and brung her home. I'll just bet that squaw stole her or something. Ma said you wouldn't let us keep her, but I said yeah, that, that I'd... That, that's enough. The rest will wait. I, I guess I better be getting home. We're all finished up, ain't we, Mr. Niles? <laughs> yeah, I think so, yes. Then you'll excuse me? Why, of course. I'll see you again on the first. Billy, come on. Bye, Mr. Niles. Good day, young man. Well, she's so small, Pa. You just wait till you see her when we get home there. <laughs> oh, hello, Sam. Howdy, boss. Say, what's the matter with Jim Overman and that kid of his? They was talking so fast, they never even seen me. I'll tell you about it later. Where have you been? Where have I been? <laughs> Just look at here. Well, what's that? Ore, boss. Gold ore. Do you ever see anything richer? Mm. Hey, it does look rich. Reminds me of the ore I took out of the Lucky Dollar years ago. Where was it found? <laughs> Hold on to your chair, boss. Huh? The lucky dollar is just where that come from. What? I found it. What were you doing in that mine? Hey, don't you recollect telling me how bad you had to have cash? And if you didn't get a hold of plenty of four long, you stood to lose most everything you had. I remember. Well, every day now, I've been spending some time at the lucky dollar. Thought maybe I might strike something. Today I did. Boss, your worries are over. You fool. What? Why didn't you tell me this before? Well, how could I? What's wrong? Everything. Huh? If I had known this two hours ago, that mine would have saved me. Two hours ago? But what? But now it's sold. Steady, Silver, steady. You were the first man to reach the stage? Not a while, stranger. You see, I'm the agent here. Yes, and I... I know. Afterwards, I suppose you checked with your company to find out how many passengers the stage had carried, huh? Of course. Did you account for all of them? All but one. Yes? Uh, just a baby it was. She's, you say uh, a child was missing? Uh-huh. She's, was there uh, more than one child on the stage? Uh, just the one, but what that do you... That means there's a chance that Matt's granddaughter is still alive. Was the search made for the child? Sure, but it never came to nothing. What well, Indians were supposed to have attacked the stage? Apaches. The soldiers said it was most likely some of Crazy Wolf's brave. Where are they now? Uh, nobody knows. Right afterwards, the whole tribe just up and pulled stakes. Uh, but look here, stranger. Come on, Silver. Hurry, old fellow. Hurry. Well, doggone.
two weeks passed. The child found by young Billy was cared for by Jim Overman and his wife, Bess. But one day, Bess was forced to send for a doctor. And after his call, she turned to her son and... Billy. Yeah, Ma? Bring me that jar there from the second shelf. You mean... You mean the one you hid your savings in that you was going to surprise Pa with? Yes, son. But what do you... Please don't ask questions. Get it quickly. Your father will be home any moment now. Is it for the medicine the doctor said you'd have to buy? Yes. Gosh, it costs an awful lot of money. I'm afraid that can't be helped. You want your new sister to get well again, don't you? Oh, gee, yeah, but... But it's... But what? But you said that with all the trouble Pa's been having at the mine, this would help him make the next payment to Mr. Niles. Billy, can you keep a secret? Huh? Will you promise not to let your father know we know if I tell you something? Oh, sure, I promise. Your father's had some money hidden away, too. Huh? He was going to surprise us. I saw it yesterday when I cleaned out that old chest of his. Now, Billy, you're not going to spoil his surprise for him, are you? He'd feel terrible if he thought we'd learned about it ahead of time. Well, I won't say a word, Ma. Good. So, you see, he won't need this money of mine. Here. You want me to go to town for the medicine? Right away. And when you get back, give it to me without your father seeing you. Now, hurry. I'll saddle up and be back before you know it. Oh, hello, Pa. Uh, hello, son. Where are you going? Oh, just just for a ride, Pa. Well, see that you're home for dinner. Oh, sure. Uh, hello, Bess. Oh, Jim, you look so tired. Is it bad again today? <clears throat> Same old story, honey. You mean trouble? Another cave-in. Took me the whole day just clearing out the rubbish to get where I was yesterday. I don't savvy it. To tell the truth, Bess, if I didn't know I was the only one had any faith in that old mine, I'd say it was just as if somebody was keeping me from working at a purpose. Oh, no. It's hard to explain any other way. The last two weeks, almost everything's happened. But you don't really think that somebody... <laughs> oh, sure, honey, I, I was just talking. I reckon it's nothing but my bad luck. Only... Yes? Well, I've been hoping by this time I'd have something to show for all the work I've put in. Oh. Howdy, young one. <laughs> Mad because I didn't say hello? Hey, you ain't looking so pert. Maybe the doc was right about you with that. Jim, you saw him? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. He stopped by on his way back. Told me the young was ailing, but I thought maybe he was just laying it on a bit strong. Reckon he wasn't from the looks of it, huh? She's been awfully sick, Jim. Poor kid. Wish it could be me instead of her. Uh, Doc mentioned some medicine, honey. Think she'll uh, have to have it? I... Uh, no. No, I don't think so. Doc said she would. Oh, that's silly. Yeah? I can take care of her. Of course I can. She won't need anything. Mm. Anyhow, we couldn't afford it. No. No, I reckon we couldn't. Now, don't worry. Please wash up. Dinner's on the stove and uh, we'll be ready. I guess dinner will have to wait for an hour or so, Bess. You have to have well, I'm sorry I didn't tell you when I first came in, but I I got a ride to town. But Jim, what for? Oh, just, just to get something. To get what? Oh, uh, just some blasting powder I have to have. Well, then why don't you start? What do you have to have from your room? Oh, uh... Uh, something I got stored away in that old chest is all. There's something you got... Uh, just, just something needs to be fixed. Oh. oh. Why? What's the matter? Uh, uh, n nothing, Jim. It's nothing. But uh, please hurry, won't you, dear? If you don't, my dinner will be spoiled. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Many miles away, while Jim Overman was riding swiftly for Cottonwood, the Lone Ranger was listening to a report from Tonto, his faithful Indian companion. You're sure those Apaches haven't seen the child? Uh, me sure. Me search camp. And perhaps that squaw was telling the truth. Huh? Where are these salt licks she mentioned? Them near Cottonwood. Back the way we came. Huh? And it was a boy who took the child? Not right. She described him? Huh? And there's hardly any doubt he lives somewhere in that neighborhood. And what we do? We're riding to Cottonwood. Uh-huh. There we'll find someone acquainted with the people in that district. We'll describe the boy and hope that he's known. Uh-huh. If he is, it may mean the end of our search. Come, Tonto. Get him up, Scott. I'll silver. Away. One morning, less than two weeks before the next payment upon the mine was due, Jim Overman said goodbye to his wife before leaving to start the day's work. Bess Overman, busy with the child, did not notice that her husband, contrary to his usual habit, wore a gun belt whose twin holsters were weighted with heavy Colt 45s. <laughs> yeah, reckon I'll have to get rid of the young un, honey. Since she showed up, there's no attention paid to me around here anymore at all. Oh, silly. <laughs> there. She's all nice and clean. You going now, Jim? Yep. Oh, how about the doc? He coming to look at the kid again today? He doesn't have to. She's well. Yeah? Doesn't she look healthy? Look at those red cheeks. Goodness, I wish I had her color. <laughs> Never would have thought it, would you? What? That the young one would get well again so quick without that there medicine doc said she had to have, eh? Oh, uh, <laughs> oh yes, yes, but I told you so, didn't I? Oh, oh sure. Jim, what are you laughing about? <laughs> oh, nothing, best nothing. Well, I reckon I'd better be running along. Yeah, see you later, young one. I'll go to the door with you. Uh, Jim, wait. Huh? Those guns, I didn't see them before. Well, uh... Why are you wearing them? Oh, I just thought it uh, wouldn't be such a bad idea. Most fellas around here do, you know. Jim, please, tell me the truth. I've heard you say a thousand times you didn't believe in always going armed. You wouldn't be wearing them now if you didn't have a special reason. Uh, please tell me, Jim. Honey, I guess you might as well know that that. The trouble I've been having at the mine ain't been accidental. You mean that... Somebody's behind it. But, but how do you know? How can you be sure? I told you how that new tunnel I started filled up yesterday, didn't I? Yes, but... Well, you... somebody got careless... That cave-in was caused by blasting powder. I found a piece of the fuse. Oh, Jim. And I've got a good notion who's responsible. Who? Mr. Niles. What? Somebody working for him. But don't you go telling anybody I said that. Well, of course not, you Jim. You see, I got no way of proving it. But just the same, he gets the lucky dollar back if I can't make a payment again next month. I told him I figured to get those payments by mine and ore. Well, this would be one way of stopping me. But you said he wasn't interested in the mine. Why, if you were, he'd never have sold it. Maybe he got to thinking it over afterwards and decided I wouldn't have been so anxious to buy if I didn't know something. But he's rich. He he's doesn't... in a mighty tough spot. He is? At least the ways he is if he can depend on the things you hear. He's got to lay his hands on cash. Plenty of cash. Seems like things have been breaking again him. He's going to have a right hard time pulling through. Well, gold will get you cash quicker than anything else in the world. Oh, it seems impossible. No more impossible than to have as much bad luck as I have been having without a reason for it. And those guns, you're expecting trouble. Bess, I don't know. There, there's no time to talk about it now. I, I have to get along. But, oh, Jim... Don't think about it, honey. Trouble comes... Yes? Well, if it does, I reckon it won't be nothing that six-gun lead can't cure. Bye. I'll see you tonight. It was the following day that the Lone Ranger and Tonto reigned in before Niles' home. Oh, 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 oh. Stay with the horses, Tonto. Uh, Give me warning if anyone comes. Uh, door. Niles. What the... This isn't a holdup. Stay away from that gun. There'll be no trouble unless you make it. What do you want? Information. But what do you... I'll explain. I'm looking for someone I believe to be in this district. I have his description, but not his name. I was told you're better acquainted with the people in this section than anyone else. Maybe you can tell me who he is. Why do you want him? I have reason to believe he knows the whereabouts of a child who survived an Indian massacre. What's that? The child's father was killed in the attack, but her grandparents are living. They're wealthy. And if she can be found, they'll take her into their home. Uh, you say you have a description? What does the boy look like? He's 15 or 16 years of age. He's a tall boy, sandy-haired and freckled. We have this description from an Indian woman. 
She also said on the day she saw him, he was riding a bay that looked more like a plow horse than a saddle horse. The boy was poorly dressed. Uh-huh. The description is vague enough. You might know a half a dozen boys who'd answer to it. If you do, give me their names and I'll check for myself. Uh, you say this child you're looking for, uh, her grandparents are well-to-do? Yes. And uh, if anyone had taken the child in and cared for it, uh, they'd show their gratitude, of course. With money? Well, uh, yes, yes. I think so. Why? Oh, just ask. No particular reason. You still haven't told me if you know any boys in the district who answer my description. Offhand, I can think of none. No? None in this district, I mean. As a matter of fact, however, I believe I can give you a lead. Perhaps not a valuable one, of course, but... What is it? There was such a youngster in the neighborhood, but only for a few weeks. He was from the east, visiting the district with his family. They came here thinking they might settle in the west. They changed their minds, however, and returned to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania? And the names? Uh, let's see. Uh, Harris. Yes, that's it. Harris. The boy's name, as I recall it, was uh, Frank. Good. Oh, wait. Yes? Don't you want to know more information? Uh, the father's name or where in Pennsylvania they came from? No, thanks. But I... You've already told me enough. In fact, Niles... Yes? You've told me more than even you realize. But I haven't... Good t- day. Tonto. You riding, Kimosabi. Riding at once. Now, where may you go? To Matt Graham's. Tell Matt we have a line on his grandchild at last. Tell him I must see him and bring him back with you. Time to do it. Make all speed possible and meet me at the place where we camped last night. Uh-huh. Now on your way. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. Come on, old fellow. Come on. In spite of Jim Overman's increased watchfulness, the accidents at the Lucky Dollar Mine continued. While the day when he must make his next payment slowly but surely drew near, and the first of the month finally arrived... Niles did not wait for Jim to come to his office. Instead, he rode out to Jim's small home and... Whoa, whoa there, whoa, whoa! <sighs> Morning. Heard you right up. Come on in. Uh, thanks. Here's Mr. Niles, Bears. Oh, how do you do? Good morning, ma'am. Well, Jim, I suppose you know why I'm here. Uh-huh, reckon I do. Uh, I'm sorry, of course, that you won't be able to make the payment you promised me, but, uh, well, business is business, you know. Meaning if I don't pay, you're taking the mine back? Wasn't that our agreement? Uh, yeah, I guess it was. But how come you're so sure I can't pay? Well, didn't you tell me you expected to pay with ore you took from the mine? I reckon I did. Well, you haven't found ore, have you? Not yet. Well, then. Ain't had the chance. Too many things have been happening to spoil the work i done. Day before yesterday, most of my tools were stolen. Oh, that's too bad. You figure it is? What do you mean? <laughs> Nothing, I reckon. Let it pass. I've had suspicions, but they don't make any difference. You see, Mr. Niles, in spite of everything that's happened to me, the lucky dollar is still mine. You mean that... I can make the payment you came after. But you said that you hadn't... (laughs) That I was just about broke, sure. But I didn't say I was clean-busted, did I? (laughs) Bess, I've got a confession to make. Yes, Jim. (laughs) Honey, maybe I should have told you this before, but I thought maybe I better not. I know about your savings. I found them one day when I was looking for some grub up on them shelves. You knew all the time. Sure did. And, Bess, I don't mind saying I'm plumb grateful to you. That cash is going to come in right handy now. The little I got left, it'll be just enough to pay Mr. Niles the $50 he's got coming. Niles, you thought that Jim, that money's spent. Huh? The baby. Don't you remember? When she was sick and the doctor said she had to have that medicine, that's what I used my money for. I thought as long as you didn't know about it, it wouldn't matter. You... You bought the kid medicine? Uh, yes. I, I... Oh, gone. But, Jim, I knew you'd been saving money. I saw it in that chest where you'd hidden it. It was enough, and well, I... Yes, I... I'd done the same as you. You what? I knew you'd been saving money, so I bought medicine without saying anything about it and give it to the doctor. Oh. <laughs> I was depending on your savings to pay Niles. And neither one of us has enough money. We're flat broke. Oh, Jim, I'm so sorry. I never dreamed oh, that best, you were... there's no use to apologizing wasn't no more your fault than mine. It... Well, it's just what we get for trying to surprise each other. Now what are you going to do? We lose the lucky dollar. Listen, Mr. Niles will give us a little more time. Would you, Mr. Niles? I promise you. Sorry. I'll... But we can... No, we'll not discuss it. I told you business is business. We made an agreement. Obviously, you can't live up to it. In that case, I have no choice. I must take my property back. Well, you rotten skunk. No, Jim, please. Let me alone. I'll call him anything I want. Well, somehow you found out the lucky dollar is valuable. If you hadn't, you'd be willing to give me more time. 
I'll bet everything I've got left in the world. You're the varmint responsible for all them accidents I had. Take it easy, Jim. You can't prove anything. Maybe I can't blast you, but I can tell you what I think of you. Careful. You are dirty, rotten. Oh, Jim, I warned you. Jim. Now I'm going to shoot. A mask, man. Stand where you are. Keep them covered, Tuttle. Uh-huh. Matt, you'll find your granddaughter in the next room. I know if it's her or not. You can't come I here. didn't leave the district as you thought, Niles. You shouldn't have exposed your hand by lying to me. I sent for Matt Graham and remained here until I learned what you were up to. I don't understand what you're talking about. And I'll tell you. I made inquiries after our conversation the other day. There had been a family here from the East with a boy such as I described. That fact might have misled me if it hadn't been for one mistake you made. Mistake? But I... You pretended to know nothing about the child I was hunting for. And yet you knew a boy had found the child before I told you. That's ridiculous. I had said nothing that could have told you the child hadn't been found by a man. Yet you asked me what the boy looked like. To know I was searching for a boy, you must have known he'd found Matt's granddaughter. You didn't tell me that, however. Now I know why. Huh? You wanted the lucky dollar mine. You feared if I stayed in the district, I'd learn Billy had found the child. I told you Matt was wealthy and would be grateful. You were afraid Matt would give these people money enough to pay you what they owed and keep the mine for themselves. Which is just exactly what I'm going to do. Jim, when I got here, the masked man told me about how you cared for the young man. If it hadn't been for you and Billy and your wife, maybe she wouldn't be alive today. Name any figure you want, and it's yours. You can't give me a penny, mister. But I... But you can loan me enough to pay for the whole of the mine at once, and I'll give you a share in it. Oh, wait, wait, you can't. I have to have that mine. It's my only chance. I have to raise money. If I don't get the mine, I'll be ruined. Which will serve you right. Now, listen, Jim, please, I... Mister... I've seen and heard enough to know that you must be responsible for the trouble Jim Overman here had, even if it can't be proved. You can't be jailed, but if you're ruined, that'll be punishment enough. Bless that mask, man. I guess I've got him to thank for plenty, too. But you won't. Huh? Look there. I'll He's leaving. Uh Uh-huh. He always does that. Why? Jim, you just seen and talked to the Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. (laughs) 